Next, from the Union League Club of Chicago, we'll hear from three recipients of the Congressional Medal of Honor as they recount some of their experiences in combat and reflect on life after combat. This runs about 30 minutes. Tell us just briefly what happened to you during the Second World War. Second World War, naturally, I was in a, a how do you call it, Mauthausen, uh, Austria, in 40 months uh, in a concentration camp. In a concentration camp. Yeah. And My family. You, you made a promise to yourself. Uh, what was yes. that promise? First of all, before a promise, my 98% of my family get killed, you know, and the uh, 11th Armored Division liberated me, General Patton Army in Mauthausen, May 1945, and the GIs was so nice to me, you know, the medics, because we was nothing but bones with uh, dysentery, lies, and they were so nice, I promised myself and the good Lord, if I ever get out of here, i like to be a G.I. Joe. And I keep the promise. And you, you had the opportunity to eventually join the Army, and what year was that? Well, actually, you say that took me three years to come to United States, because I was born in Hungary, and Hungary, Italy, Germany and Japan, the ASIS was an enemy of the United States. Well, Hungary didn't want me. I couldn't go to the United States because I was an enemy of the United States, according to the law, you know. So I come to the United States, 1948, uh, May 1948. And then what year did you join the Army? Well, take me a little while because I went to, as soon as I come to United States, I want to join the Army, and I went down to the recruiting station, and a nice sergeant asked me, yes, young man. I said, I want to become a G.I. Joe. So he said, you're in the right place. But I don't speak any English, so they gave me the English test, and naturally I flung that. You know, there was an A, B, C, D, and I don't understand one word, I have to tell you the truth, but there was an A, B, C, D, I figure here I put an A and a B and a C, then I flunked it. Then he said, that, don't worry about it, you know, you just come to the country, come back six months. And so uh, you eventually got in, and, and again, what year was that uh, that you got 19 in? 1950, February. February of 1950, which was right as the Korean War uh, was just about to start. Uh, Korean War come later on. And then you, you eventually went over to Korea. Yes. Tell us what happened uh, that you came to win the Congressional Medal of Honor. Well, you see what happened there. Uh, I hate to tell you that because I have a first sergeant and he don't like Jews, he don't like blacks, he don't get, he don't like Latinos. When he find out I'm Jewish, I become his volunteer. Volunteer means that anywhere he want to send me, he could send me day and night and naturally I didn't find it out later on, he actually wanted to get killed. But somehow I always come back. So my first assignment was my regiment pulled out from a big mountain and he told me that you go up the mountain and uh, cover the withdrawal. So I didn't know what the heck was it really. I didn't know what I'm getting to it. So my whole battalion, a regiment moved out and I was alone in a mountain. So you see that I know the North Koreans come every morning hollering banzai, buying, that's when victory, you know, like a Japanese. So I was up over there. In the meantime, I, there was a lot of ammunition. I put it in a foxhole. Each foxhole, because the troops move out, I put in a bunch of hand grenades. I fill up the 
how do you call that, my M1, then a lot of rifle uh, and a carbine, I fill it up, and I was waiting. So all of a sudden I realized it all by myself. I said, what the heck this guy did, you know? So I was praying to Jesus, Moses, Mohammed, Buddha. I said, so I hope somebody get my ass already. <laughs> because that is terrible, you know? So then, when they're coming four o'clock in the morning, banzai, banzai. So what happened? I was by myself in a mountain. It was a small mountain. And I ran to one foxhole, the next foxhole, you know, that I tried to tell him that more like it's more than one man here. Because if they find out one man, I would be killed in no time. So I was successful by holding the hill around two days, I think. So, you know, I was nothing but sweating and running around and, you know. So that was the first time, you know, that actually, you know, I never killed anybody before. And uh, I come from a religious Jewish family. And for killing, you know, even there was so-called enemy. I kill, I gonna end up killing somebody, father or brother or husband. It was very hard. What I have to do, at what can I do? Kill or be kill or will be killed. So you see, later on, my company commander, they come up because there was a lot of ammunition. They have to pick it up. And thank God the Air Force come in the morning, you know, and the core North Koreans disappeared. In the meantime, you know, my hurry call that I went back and what happened there, uh, my captain call, my, you know, my company commander call, and, you know, he realized so many People I killed over there, naturally I feel sick. And uh, he called me aside. He said, Tiber, I have to tell you, this is a war. It's a war. He said, or you kill or you're going to be killed. He said, but you did a good job, you know. He said, I'm going to recommend you the Congressional Medal of Honor. I didn't even know what is a Congressional Medal of Honor was. Only thing I was worried, I killed so many people here. So that was my first time. After I was recommended six times the Congressional Medal of Honor, three times the Distinguished Service Cross, three times the Silver Star, and two Purple Heart. And it wasn't as if to get it because I have a wrong last name. What are, your, what are your thoughts uh, as now a recipient of the Congressional Medal of Honor? Well, this is the greatest honor, especially not born here, because this is the best country in the world. And they liberated me from the camp. Actually, I owe them something. And I'm very proud because, as I told you, that's the greatest and the best country in the whole world.